guys, I'm Jace. Welcome back to Farmstead Ford. So today I am doing a walk around of my mobile shop. I did a little video here a while back of a simple project out of my mobile shop and everybody wanted to see it. So today I'm gonna kinda cover why I made it the way I did, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I'm also going to cover setup and pack up so you can see how compact it is and how everything just fits right in its place. And then stick around till the end because I will pack it and unpack it in real time so you can see how fast it goes. Originally I had a little custom trailer that I had designed that I really loved. Um, I loved the, the layout of it, but I hated it. I hated, I hated the tires I had to buy for it, packing the bearings. And the worst of all, we get a lot of wind and snow here and there's times I couldn't get home with it in the winter time, so I hated being stuck with it. I didn't like that, the idea of a pickup just dedicated to my mobile shop because pickups break down, right? And then you don't have, then you're just out for a while and you're scrambling, you're trying to figure out how you're gonna get through your week. So I always just drove higher mileage pickups, so definitely had to work on things a little bit. So I didn't like that. This main concept a friend of mine actually came up with, so I kind of took his idea and ran with it. So this is designed so I can pull a gooseneck trailer if I have to. Although now that I have a skid steer, I most I usually just take it off. It takes me like 10 minutes to take it off. This setup, it takes me five minutes to unpack it and five minutes to pack it up, unless it's at the end of a long day, and it probably takes 10 minutes, or if I got a client jabbering my ear off, it probably takes me 15 minutes. I also have two other flatbed pickups that this fits, so if I have a down pickup, or need to take one in for maintenance or tires or whatever, it takes me 10 minutes to put this box on one of my other pickups. So I unpin this. This is, um, actually shotgun shells I made for bushings on here and I just use epoxy. Um, I change these maybe once a year, although these are probably a lot longer than I've done that. Um, the federal ones actually last way better on there. It just kind of deadens the sound and, and um, nice little bushing on there. Take off my tailgate, I guess, and I slide it right in there. The other thing I like about this setup is at the end of a long day, if I need to get a pallet of something in town, I still have room for a pallet on the back of here. So I just pop my pallet on and go home. I mean, every time you can save a trip with fuel, right, it's worth it. My broom just holds right out from under there. These wheels that have a little stop right here so it doesn't go wee off of there. Uh, these are 1,000 pound carriage wheels, so um, they're 4,000 pounds. I have four of them on there. This box weighs, just guessing, roughly about 15 to 1,700 pounds with all my stuff in it. I also have a runaway chain, I call it, right there, just so we don't have to worry about stuff coming off and I also have these pins I made so if I am going to have to back up to a barn or down to a barn they just slide in there and pin and then I can back uphill or downhill so this is a pretty simple setup um, when I got rid of my trailer, I had to downsize some things, but it has definitely made me improve my Ford skills. Um, so, the fan only goes with me um, in the summertime, and I'll show you where I put that. The rasp always, my, my good rasp always goes back in here with my hoof knives, so I can sharpen them every night. Um, it's not a huge inventory of shoes. But I, I stock my rig every night. I never am away from home more than the day. So, um, and then there's my hot rest stand, which we'll get into that in a minute. I also have some different lengths of bar stock 
in case I have to build a shoe on the fly. Um, but I'm kind of a schedule Nazi, so I know exactly what I'm working on the day before. This side, I have my extension cord reel. Um, this is just kind of my trim side, so if I'm just trimming horses, I don't have to unpack everything. This is my apron, my shovel that I got for free at a garage sale that needed, um, it was broke, which is fine because I just cut it off so it actually fits in here. I have a short quench bucket um, that just fits in there that I always keep with water in the winter time. I only keep about a quarter just so I have ice if there's no no water to be had. My trim stand in here that I made. Um, I don't like this one for shoeing on because it's of the cradle built onto it. It's just hard to wrap your heels. So um, I just use this one for trimming. This is a little trim stand that I carry with me. For a bit. Um, just some basic tools for, for pulling shoes when I need to. Um, that is a dead shoe bucket slash garbage um, with an extra hot. These under, these were like a body box. Originally I wasn't gonna do it like this, um, but I actually like it now. Another farrier was getting rid of four of these for like 200 bucks, and these are like three, $400 boxes, and I just couldn't resist the temptation to pick them up. So I just wound up incorporating them into this. Um, because I had to pull a gooseneck trailer, I made this base, and then all this, I did cardboard cutouts, and I would hook up to a trailer and see how far I could turn and all of that. And then I'd say, oh, I gotta shave a little more off or add a little more here till I came up with something that would work. I took everything out of my custom trailer at my brother's shop and I put it on the ground and I said, all of this has to fit in there. And he said, um, I don't think there's any way you're gonna get it in there. And I did. It took me a few times to get everything in and out, but I got it. A little step that just goes in the receiver hitch. Just give me that little extra boost up in there if I need. Back catch. It's very simple. I just have a rod right here. Hooks in a little pin. Maybe get a close up of that in a minute. My shoeing cart sits right on top of everything. My anvil, my sand, my forge, everything fits in here. I have to take everything out in a certain order and put it back in a certain order. So, first comes out my shoeing cart. This is a Cobra shoeing cart. Um, I got this uh, sponsor at the International Hoof Care Summit, gave it to me one year. So, that was pretty cool of them. Um, Nature Farms, Fairy Supply, they came up with them. And I really like my Cobra. And I like the tall handle, but it would not. It wouldn't fit in my rig. So I came up with this little pin design. So my handle folds up and it kind of locks into place. And then I just pin it. My anvil stand is next. I bring it out. And I set it about like so at the back of my rig. Um, little tool tray that fits just inside of here, sits down in, I have a little bolt on the back that just tightens it up. And this is a leather pad, and it really takes out the noise for any of the rebound Nazis out there. This is condensed down as far as it will go. I mean, this leather is not going to give at all, but it really does absorb the sound. The only downside to the anvil the way I have it is the only way I could get it to fit in here is to put it in backwards ideally it would have been nice to have my horn over here so I could pick it up just set it on my stand so what I have to do is pick it up set it on my stand and just spin it so um, it's just a, a con that I had to live with and I've actually got it down so it can do it super fast but um, it just hooks right here behind my my grinder bracket, I have a little pin that pulls out, out, and just 
set it on, and I do one of these. I slide it in, I can roll this up, and put it into place. This is a 100 pound Scott anvil, and I, I absolutely love this anvil for, for a mobile rig. It's just a nice compact with a nice face. Works great. And the difference, versus so you can see why I have the leather pad. The grinder is just on a dog leg, comes out and rests against my back rail. Um, I got a buffing wheel for reset shoes. Yeah, no guard, anything like that. But you use your noggin, you don't tear up your fingers. Expander wheel that I, I love just for box and shoes. My forge swing out. It's right out here. And this is a NC Tool Co forge. And I, I really love my little NC Tool Co two burner. Um, it's, it's just a, a nice little forge. The other thing I'll talk about really quick is with my trailer, my forge was at the back just like this. And from all the rough roads, the bouncy roads, I was putting a liner in every year. I built this setup five years ago. This is, I put a new liner in the, the day I built the, the whole setup or the week or whatever. And it's still the same liner, so it just holds up incredibly well in this rig. It's getting a little rough, but it, it still holds up. It's still holding up nice. Up in here, sorry it's dark. Uh, this milk crate has pads and all the a lot of extra little stuff that you do with pads um, little fire rake for doing borium in the winter time I got a 40 pound bottle for my main bottle this lasts me shoeing four to five days a week except for the winter time which would be three days a week but either way when you're doing a bunch of borium it lasts me right at three weeks pretty much to the day so I can always kind of judge but I have a spare bottle just to bail me out. My hoof stand here. My, my good apron hangs right in there. And my cradle's there. I have some beeswax, my two main hammers, all my tongs. Up in here is just loaded with pritchels punches, everything. It's a little tight and it's a little chaos, but I could always add a little more if I need to, but like I said, simple's always better. My butcher block brush just hangs right up there on a pig, and a lot of times I just set it right there in the wintertime when I'm doing boring a lot. Uh, this milk crate is just full of some extra tools, uh, stuff for doing acrylics. My acrylic gun and all that good stuff. So I have to have this out to get to that, but it's always gonna be out anyway. My fan, I set up right on that toolbox and it blows right on me, blows the heat away from my anvil. So it's a great place to set it. And then it just plugs into my extension cord reel that I steal power from somebody's barn. And then if uh, I don't have power, I'm doing, you know, just, toughen it out with hot rasp and everything else, but I honestly don't shoe in those kind of barns anymore. I got pretty nice barns I work out of. And this is my hot rasp pan that everybody wanted to see. And it just tucks right back in there. This is actually an NC Tool Co. hot rasp stand um, that I, I've gotten in a trade from a farrier a long, long time ago. And then I just made this setup to fit my hardy hole. And it, it's kind of sloppy, and I remember making it like that for a reason, but <laughs> now I don't know, remember what my reason was. But it just sets right in there on my anvil. And um, in my other video, I said if I had a better 
vise, it would have turned out nicer. And I didn't, I didn't mean it like that, but a friction vise is not great for doing twists because it, it wants to open up, you know. But for hot rasping, um, this is awesome. And it's got an incredible grip. You do not want to get your finger in that bad boy. And it just has the foot pedal down there. So when you stand on it, it opens up. You see I'm pulling my whole handle over so it really, it really holds well. So this guy is my little oil well. If you guys want to know what that's for, maybe you can drop a comment and maybe we will do a video on just that little guy. He um he saves me a ton of money every year, especially in the winter time. Before I found these boxes and decided to use them, I was going to just kind of come down here somewhere and uh, build the door so it opened up like most farrier rigs, um, which would have been handy, but I actually really like these because it just like, gives you a whole new extra workspace, you know, place to set stuff. Unless the weather's bad, then you got to keep them shut, but I am all set up to where I just run my extension cord out the back if I need it, and I can have all this shut up. Um, I've done a lot of checks wrote on these little benches. I always tell my clients, step into my office, and then they write their check. These are just heavy-duty um, pin stock that I welded on with a nice triangle gusset. And up here is this one, and this main frame, it runs clear down to my frame on this flatbed. I got this flatbed for like 800 bucks, it was a used flatbed. It's been on like four different pickups that I know of, so it's a little rough, but it's my main one. The track is just a um, piece of like four inch flat iron with a nice half inch rod weld, welded to it. I, d I didn't want anything like angle iron that if you went down on it with your knee or shin that it was going to hurt, especially when I have little kids crawling around on stuff all the time. I kind of thought that I would have to weld some stuff up, cracks, with this big box on all our rough roads. Um, but so far, I've never had to weld a crack up on it. It just fits really snug and tight. I'll do a real-time pack and unpack here in a minute, but first things first, my hoof jack. Drop my tarp strap. My apron. My hoof stand. Always make sure my propane's off for the third time probably because I'm like that. My forge swing out. Goes in. My line just tucks right in there, it's neat, so when it's cold, it's always in the same shape. My grinder. My anvil, I pull out, just set it there, spin around, give it a little heave ho, tuck it behind its spot. Pin it. Oops, I'm gonna fall all over. My tool tray sits right in there. My anvil stand sits right in there. It sits between the heel and my forge, so my forge doesn't go anywhere and my door's not sitting there flopping. My chewing cart and pin it. I just like the tall handle because I can roll it around. One less thing to bend over. And then it goes up. There. Now, here's the second reason I take my rasp out. This rasp holder also works for the slide for my rod. So I just set it right in the rasp holder, it down. Boom, just like that. Roll it forward and pin it, and I'm out of here. It is a little bit uphill right here, so it takes a little bit. But... It actually rolls pretty 
nice. And then just pack it back up the opposite way. One goes under. Tailgate goes in, 10 miles side. ready to shoot.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of my mobile shop. It has its pros and cons, um, but at the end of the day, this is, this is my one and only mobile shop. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. If you did like the video, give it a like, hit subscribe, I'd appreciate it. If you are a farrier and you would like to check out my farrier tool playlist, We'll post a link right up here and you can check that out. Also, you saw this date. It's the wrong date that bugs me, but it was already done by the time they sent them to me. So I didn't just start like a year ago. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one.